Hey guys, welcome back to the COVID Cocktail Club after a weekend. This Monday morning is rainy and gross and dark and I feel sort of like I'm, I'm in a cave right now. Do I look like I'm in a cave a little bit? A little bit. A little bit. We're gonna bring you a little bit of happy to this really sad, miserable day and give you a nice drink. We have a whole theme this week of tall, refreshing drinks because it's hot as balls out there and we think you're gonna just need to cool down this week. Can I say that? You just did. I think it's okay. If, if I were a TV network, I'd be Netflix. Yeah, you'd be a Hulu and Netflix. Yeah, you're a little, just a little edgy, a little on edge, but that's fine. That's good. It's refreshing. Okay. It's refreshing, much like these cocktails. Our cocktail today is going to be one that we're going to use that pomegranate juice that we used last week again, because since you guys bought it, we wanted to give you guys plenty to do with it. I have no idea where we found it. Uh, I Google and I look and I search and I find things and then we start tweaking them and then we start messing with it. and. I have no idea what this thing started out as or, or how we got to where we are, but <laughs> this is, this is going to be an interesting one. It's a, it's a riff on a Kentucky mule. Sure. With right? some pomegranate. Yeah. If you don't have rye sitting around, you can use bourbon, but I think uh, Jason and I were both drawn to the rye because of the spicy notes with the ginger beer, and there's a lot of sweet going on, so we thought bourbon may be a little bit much. But this is going to be a really simple, easy cocktail that we hope you will enjoy. This cocktail is called the Jack Flash. Not to be confused with the Jumping Jack Flash. Which is a different cocktail. I don't know why this is called the Jack Flash, but it is. I'm still going to connect this one with one we made <laughs> prior that had a little Stones reference. Remember the uh, Mick Jagger and the, uh, the Tequila Sunrise? Remember that whole story? Yes. Or am I thinking of that really bad Whoopi Goldberg movie in the 80s, which we're not going to talk about? <laughs> Fair enough. Maybe, maybe we have a thing for the Stones. I don't know. Maybe so. We're going to shake the, the first three ingredients in this. It's just going to be two ounces of rye, one ounce of the pomegranate juice, which you could fresh squeeze if you want, or just get the palm, which is 100% uh, juice, so it's not gross and like sugary and disgusting. Half ounce of lime. Fresh squeeze as always. We wouldn't have it any other way. I think if we give you a lie detector test, I think at some point in the last few years, you've run out of lime juice and gone to the fridge and found the, the squeegee, the little squeegee lime juice. Thousand percent. Yeah, me too. I always have it there to cheat. You know what sometimes actually happens if I'm just making for myself is I'll, I'll start with fresh lime and then like I need just a smidge more and I don't want to open up a whole nother lime. So I'll just top it with that too. Fresh. Getting ice and shaking this guy. Just turn it over fresh ice over the highball. And I'm using sort of a, a pseudo highball. It's, it's in between a highball and an old fashioned. It looks like an old fashioned ice, but it's actually quite large. So it's going to hold a lot more. It's not something you would want to put like a small sort of boozy drink in. It's more of a refreshing, lots of ice sort of drink like this. So I went with this guy here. And it's also kind of fun. I don't know if you guys can see, it's got a big rooster on it. So it just it feels like a very fun, easy cocktail, no rules. What does it have on it? It has a rooster. I'm calling it a rooster. <laughs> Topping with ginger beer. That'll give it a little bit of a uh, bite, a little bit of sting, a little bit of effervescence, some fizz. I also want to point out we're both using goslings. There's lots of ginger beers out there, especially in the last couple of years. They really, along with tonic water, have gotten pretty big. But I, I still go back to this guy here. In fact, I actually prefer him over the fever tree, which I like fever tree for everything else. I think this is still the best ginger beer out there. I agree with you on that. And they make a diet too, which I actually have. Have you ever tried the diet? I have. I don't think it's bad. Not a fan. No, I mean, if I'm making one drink, I'm drinking this. If I'm drinking a few of these, I'm probably going to the diet. There's a lot of sugar. Not a fan. I'm going to garnish them real pretty. It looks like you did the same thing. Candy, ginger, and a lime wheel. Yep. Again, this isn't uh, the most uh, creative, most exciting cocktail, but I think it's a really good, solid, refreshing summer cocktail, especially if you like bourbon. It's probably a way you've not had bourbon before or rye. It, it's an um, umbrella which by the way is appropriate right now if you look outside. Right. Yeah, if you like whiskey, I agree. This is, I mean, so many of those whiskey drinks that I think people like are always, you know, really, really boozy and, and strong. And it's, it's hard to feel okay about enjoying it, you know, in the middle of the day. But if you do it like this, I think. Um, well, it, it, it makes bourbon and rye and whiskey more appropriate for summer. Not right. just in the daytime, just it's more of like, a, I don't normally like to drink bourbon or rye when it's hot out. I'm right. more of like a gin, tequila, mezcal. Definitely not a nightcap. Not a nightcap. No, more of a, a lifestyle drink. There it is. Let's talk about Wednesday. I'm excited for Wednesday. 
Uh, it may or may not be because there's Campari in it. So along with your Campari, get your tequila. If you have mezcal, we could try mezcal as well. The base cocktail is tequila. Oh, watermelon. You bring your watermelon back, which is kind of fun, bringing the kitchen back to the bar, along with some mint and some fresh lime juice again. So that's gonna be a good one. Again, playing off of what Ricey said, this week's all about refreshing cocktails. So it's a little more bitter, uh, not quite as, I would say not as easy as this drink for most people, but if you're liking Campari or starting to, I think it's another way to introduce Campari in your, into your uh, menu. It'll be a little bit more of a complex sipper. I'm excited about that. That's a good word for that one. Thank you. All right, see you guys Wednesday. Right. See you Wednesday. Cheers, guys. Cheers, Jason. <laughs>